Grüß Gott, Gregory von Nebestag hier. I'm so stoked to announce that we have our first English workout course and it's called 30 Days of Kettlebells. I'm clicking on my 30 Days of Kettlebells course. On your left hand corner, you have all the chapters and the lessons. All these workouts are divided into chapters and into lessons. Right here it says, welcome to 30 days of kettlebells. We have some important information, blah, blah. So then when you're ready, you can click on continue and boom, you're switching into your first workout and it already starts. So here you got your first workout. As you can see, when we scroll down, you can see here is the description for the workout. No ads, no ad break. Okay, it's just the workout and you. You see the exercises, you see what you have to do. 30 Days of Kettlebells is an intense workout program that builds you up as a beginner without prior knowledge. That's what we specialize in. And this is very important. Even though we cover certain aspects of different exercises and small tutorials, this is not a specific technique class or course. We offer these types of courses as well. However, they're currently only in German. This is strictly a workout course. From now on, you will receive one of the following tasks each day for the next 30 days. You have a workout. So if a car pops up that says workout, here you will be tasked to work out. Simple. If a car pops up that says rest on your day two you saw previously, we believe that regeneration is also as important as working out. On these days, you can rest. Then we move on, you have cards that pop up that say rest and study. Here you can rest and you can study a specific topic that we'll cover in this lesson. And finally, you have some cards that pop up that say rest or workout. What that means is you can either work out if you feel like it or you can take a break. It's only $49.99, so if you want to support us, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support our kettlebell courses, and if you want to enjoy something ad-free and learn something new and get a deeper understanding of the kettlebell and get a deep connection to us, then feel free to buy this course and have fun. This is your captain, Gregory Jumaili speaking. Thank you for choosing Liebestock Airlines. We're about to take flight. Please fasten your kettlebells. <laughs> The ride may get a little bumpy. We may encounter some turbulences, but we will get through them. Don't forget to let us know where you're from. Type it in the chat or leave a comment. Tell us your city or country and let us send you some love. Get ready for takeoff. <laughs>
And um, uh, yeah, I just got this huge order today. And now we're trying some stuff. Guys, you can look forward to the new workout. We're actually upgrading our workout schedule. So on a two, on Thursday, Angie's gonna do a new session and we will be live at 11 a.m. Central Eastern Standard Time. We will be live. And um, this is another live workout session that we add to the mix. We see a lot of growth happening with our YouTube, YouTube channel, which we're incredibly grateful for. I think it's right now um, in these trying times that we live in, a lot of people are still discovering or are even more discovering the kettlebell which is so awesome and that's the reason why we do this stuff that's the reason why we upgrade our equipment that's the reason why in why we in why we invest in the youtube channel it's actually still pretty small uh, we're we're on the road to 10,000 subscribers guys maybe we can do it this year or maybe we can make it uh, i think in january we'll be 100 we'll be there and it's just so great to see. So that's the reason why we're upgrading our YouTube game. We switching to a little bit of more of these live sessions where you guys are joining and uh, which we really, really love. And Thursday is the new session, 11 a.m. Central Eastern Standard Time. And Saturday, 12 p.m. Central, Central Eastern Standard Time is the usual uh, workout where Angie and me are going online and guys please look forward to Thursday where Angie's doing her first live workout because the awesome thing about the new live workout is we have new two cameras set up so we will capture the whole live event live event from two angles and right now I got some new uh, I got a new streaming deck so I'm trying to new trying some new stuff uh, to be as as focused on the stream as possible and I hope guys you are bearing with me uh, we're trying some stuff I hope if we uh, experience any any technical issues please bear with me and please let me know in the chat guys because this is so important we want to serve you the best high quality content when it comes to kettlebell there is this is a very huge a very very huge endeavor but I'm so hungry because I see how how things are turning out i see how the youtube channel is developing and it's just so awesome to hang out with you guys so 11 a.m this thursday the new live workout with angie saturday the usual time 12 p.m tune in and make sure you join us with this awesome live workout that we got going for you and these tuesdays guys now it's tuesday uh, 8 p.m we have these kettlebell q a podcasts where i'm just talking uh because I love to talk about kettlebells. I have so much stuff in store for you guys that I want to share and always tune in for these sessions. And I see we have six people in the chat. We have Rolf uh, saying good evening from Alisund, Norway, sending you love to Norway. We have uh, ne Neboisa Kalujerovic, big respect, showing you much love. Uh, I think you were last time in the live stream you joined, right? So awesome that you guys are joining and uh, Rolf, you had this question, right? It's so awesome that you're in the chat right now because you asked, where can we send these questions? When, whenever you have a question about anything, you can post it under, under any video. We see it in the comment section and then we can answer it and we can check it out. And we're actually thinking about maybe opening up a Discord server that you guys can really ha hang out with each other and build a little uh, go a bit further in the YouTube community. This is actually what we're trying to do. And um, yeah, that's that that's what it is. So guys, before we even get started, we have this. Uh, we have the title of this video is Kettlebell Science. What about Kettlebell Science? So. I prepared myself, I wasn't, and, and this is no excuse, but actually I wasn't able to prepare myself as much as I wanted to because we had this week so much going on. We have so much stuff going on. We have a lot of new clients joining. We have a lot of new uh, uh, um, stuff to do. And this, this week is full with a lot of stuff. Like I mentioned, we got the new equipment and we have an additional live workout. And... Um, it's just so much stuff going on, but still, I I wanted I I've I've seen this very interesting YouTube video uh, from Kettlebell Science. I I think it was the NSCA, 
and um, Bill Williams, I think is his name, will jump right into it. And he asked or he showed some very interesting studies that I want to share with you guys. So actually what I prepared myself to do was um, I prepared uh, some of the, the bits and pieces of this 45 minute video uh, and we, we will jump into it and we will check it out because he mentioned some very interesting things about the study that I want to show you and I will comment on it and you of course can leave a comment in the comment section. That would be very, very awesome. And we would just jump right into it. I see we have 11 people in the chat. So great, guys, that you are joining. We have uh, Neboy. Hey, Neboy, sir. Du bist aus Erfurt. Hey, liebe Grüße nach Deutschland. Sending love. And we have Brian Eder. Greetings from San Jose, California. Yeah, the Sunshine State. And guys, hey, you, vo you voted, right? Uh, listen, this is not a political channel, but it's just, I think it's very interesting what happened uh, with, with, uh, with the election in the united states how it took so long and now it finally it finally happened i remember how i almost every day i just wanted to see what's going on and there was no development and then all of a sudden boom it happened so guys uh, congratulations to your new president and uh, let's see how these things turn out and now we want to switch into this very interesting youtube video now you guys who are joining right now in the chat guys I need your support because now I'm switching to one of those uh, moments of this very interesting video and you guys have to help me with this one because I'm actually trying this now, um, switching to display capture. No, it's not working. Uh, so, so bad. It's not working. But hey, it's live. So what you want to do? Boom, switching right now. And now you should see the video i have to switch back and forth i actually um oh and now the camera's missing oh my the camera's missing guys <laughs> oh my god have to switch to the camera guys for a second <laughs> well i prepared myself so much for the stream and now we have some technical issues great guys and i'm using the stream deck which is not working ah oh, so cool but now let's switch to it and i have to turn this one on and see, let me know, guys, if you hear else anything. Yet. In fact, if I pull this up here, there's been 12 studies published with the, with the right term now. kettlebell in the anything, title. Guys? Other than the two reviews, we're going to cover every one of them today. And obviously, you have the slides, you have yes, every Brian, single reference on these. So there's no reason that you cannot feel very yes. confident about what the research says with kettlebells and it sounds like you guys are all okay proficient i, I mean, just, you're using sorry guys clients, i was so I'm assuming that really, really you also off right now because i wanted to see if the video was playing guys i presented i um prepared my stuff with the with the stream deck which is not working so unfortunately but hey you never learn uh, it's always it's always a learning process volume was fine long to thank you very much now let's dive into hey and and, and great uh, great that you're joining, Longto. Let's check out um, 425, and it's very interesting. Um, Bill Campbell, his name is Bill Campbell, not Bill Williams. Um, it's so interesting, this video is so interesting. The benefits and drawbacks of using kettlebells in a training program. So he actually mentions in the at the 425 marks, he mentions how many studies there are when it comes to kettlebell training. Listen, guys. There's not been much research on kettlebells yet. In fact, if I pull this up here, there's been... 12 studies published with the with the term kettlebell in the title and let's stop right here guys 12 studies published 12 scientific articles published on kettlebells two reviews and i think reviews are i'm not a professional when it comes to reading uh, studies but i think the reviews are peer reviews where people are checking for uh, different uh, studies and then they peer review it go through it and that's one thing. Then we have two studies about muscle activation, one on back loads. We have five muscular strength and power production, five on muscular strength and power production. Vertical jump, this is one that we will jump into. Two about caloric expenditure, and one about the musculoskeletal health about low back pain. So as you can see, guys, right from the bat, so interesting to see the kettlebells are not, or are really, when it comes to science, kettlebells are not as much researched as other topics. And I believe, if I can say something to this, I believe there is two reasons for this. First of all, the kettlebell was 
came or or uh, Pavel Tsatsolin was the first person to discover or not to discover to to bring the kettlebell to bring kettlebells on the map in the western part of the world as you probably know the kettlebell originated in the east in the eastern uh, countries in Russia Ukraine and all that kind of stuff where their kettlebell training is just it, it's normal it's like it, it, it's standard practice like vodka <laughs> and, and this is so interesting but and then Pavel brought the kettlebells or brought kettlebells to the map in the western part of the world in the year I think 2000s and I'm paraphrasing very important guys I'm paraphrasing this story from Steve Cotter who shared this story with me back in June 2019 my memory is flawed so it may be that I'm misquoting something or mis mis saying something but it's very interesting what I think he said or what I think he told me he said that kettlebells came in in the 2000s Pavel made it really really big in in the United States and Steve jumped on board I think I don't know I think 2001 or something like this or 2000 he was one of those early he, he's really really early in in the in the in the kettlebell game so um, I think they started with Dragon Door was the first business of Pavel that he used and um, I think Steve Cotter was his main presenter his main coach and then they too they both split ways but however in the 2000s so I mentioned now we have 2020 so the kettlebell is about 20 years old when it comes to 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 uh, being up front in the fitness world so that everybody knows about it and still you have so many gyms not utilizing the kettlebell to its full potential because it's so rarely used and rarely studied at least in the western world so if you think if an exercise equipment has only 20 years under its belt that's pretty 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 young even though you can say it's dated back to the 1800s in in russia and all these countries we can still say we here in the western world we have heard about kettlebells about 20 years ago so i believe that's the reason why reason number one why i believe there are so not not many scientific articles published on the power of kettlebells that's one thing and the second thing which i believe is very interesting is probably and i'm really this is pro this is my opinion i see that there may be some not pressure but some political situation happening because the kettlebell originated in russia maybe we see some politics happening that the kettlebell is not very much researched or studied because it's a Russian instrument or it came from Russia and so maybe we have a bias towards the Russian people or towards Russia in general so people be like hey I don't think it's that interesting to study that stuff because politics <laughs> you, you get me what I'm saying you get what I'm saying so I think these are two very interesting reasons at least my take but let me know in the live chat guys why do you think wh let me know why do you think there's only 12 scientific scientific articles published on kettlebells which is so 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 rare let me know in the chat guys let's keep on going with the video other than the two reviews we're gonna cover every one of them today and obviously you have the slides you have every single reference on these so there's no reason that you cannot feel very confident about what the research says with kettlebells and it sounds like you guys are all proficient I mean you're using them with your clients so I'm assuming that means you also use them so you know the technical details of the movement of the swings but what does the science say so I, mm. I will bridge that gap today at least that's my goal which is very interesting and, and one thing that I want to mention is this video is like uh, it's 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 2016 so that means it's four years old so maybe now the science has has progressed a little bit but I remember how I discovered or how I started implementing and using um oh wait oh, oh switching All right here I am back again All right so but I remember I'm sorry sometimes I get caught off guard when I see my stuff hanging around so uh, I remember, guys, how I really, um, when I started our uh, Lebestock Academy, we started in the COVID crisis when it started. Oh, shit, I said, oh, sh I said shit and I said COVID. YouTube, please don't demonetize the video. <laughs> so um, what I wanted to say. In, in, in March, I started the Lebestock Academy where we offer these online courses. 
And you find a link in the description if you're interested. We started with an English course recently. I think that's two or three months ago. It's called 30 Days of Kettlebells. Very interesting workout course, which we now offer in English. But we started in German because maybe some of you don't know who just joined. Um, we started this uh, YouTube channel in German. So we have one of our strongest videos is actually in German and it's close to 100,000 views, which is very, very awesome. So this is our base. So, and we have, uh, we have, we are a German speaking nation. So for our clients, of course, I went into the German speaking route. So when I started the, the Leberstock Academy, I was actually looking, uh, I've designed a lesson that's called kettlebell science or kettlebell and, kettlebells and science. So I went myself on, uh, on, a, on a quest for some research and I found, I can't remember the, the name right now, which it, it escapes me right now, but it's a peer reviewed, very interesting study when it comes to kettlebells. And I took this one apart and I've presented in the lesson how interesting the, 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 the scientific background for kettlebells is. And at the same time, this was, I think, a fairly new study that said we still need more research. So I'm actually what I did is I took my, my, this lesson, I've upgraded it. I've modified it and I took it to one of my clients who has a contact to one of the most well-known universities in Switzerland, which is called ETH. And I thought we were able maybe to land a hit to, to get somebody uh, to be motivated or fascinated about kettlebell training to do some science stuff, but nobody answered. <laughs> <laughs> I've said like, I've sent an email to like 12 or 15 people. And I think somebody, one of, one of the doctors or one of the scientists answers and she said, hey, listen, this sounds very interesting, but unfortunately I'm only doing stuff on rats. <laughs> this was very interesting. So maybe, maybe guys, this YouTube channel or I'm, I'm because please believe me, I'm so much on a quest to want to wanna push this thing forward and I'm so hungry, but maybe the channel has to grow a little more. Maybe the name we have to we have to just do some uh, um, some of our homework and get some stronger influence, and maybe we can work this out because I'm so highly invested in kettlebell training. I'm so interested in the science aspect of it that maybe we can we can find somebody who's really interested in and in dig into it. So let's keep going. Before we get into the I don't know, we'll probably cover about eight studies. There are several limitations that I want to put out front. These are things that are not ideal about the science now comes to the of kettlebells. Yeah. The first thing is yeah. Very not, almost all the studies used a, I believe it is a 16 kilogram kettlebell. Hmm. So does that mean everybody should be using a 16 kilogram kettlebell in kettlebell swings? Probably not, maybe for some people, maybe for a majority of people. But that's a limitation. Obviously, some people should maybe be using heavier kettlebells. Maybe some people should be using lighter ones. But mm. almost all of the studies, that has been the standard kettlebell weight. Very interesting. And this can I can I can confirm this because I saw this on the study that I was uh, picking apart on this research. And I will put the link in the description once the video is over, and I can show it to you. You can you can check it out for yourself. It was a peer review on Meta. A meta review study and the name escape why is the name escaping me i was really digging into that study and now it escapes me however and they were using the 16 kilogram as well and this was one thing that i pointed out it's so interesting when i watch this video and it says this and it's so awesome if you see somebody um agreeing on what you say because i said this is one of the limitations when it comes to science because if you use a 16 kilo only then we would choose or we would have to choose a different workout routine because you can really go to your max when it comes to training with, with the 16 kilo. I think it's an evergreen weight. But then you have to go way more into endurance or you have to do way, way more time, which can be very, which can be and also a very interesting aspect. Imagine if we could find out if some, we could prove or we could find out, hey, what happens if somebody's doing who's pretty strong doing a 10 minute set or a 15 minute set like we did in our marathon workout we do it for 15 minutes guys with the 16 kilo kettlebell seven and a half minutes left seven and a half minute rights and see what happens what kind of muscles activating how is the recovery if we do it for long term how is the muscle growth how is the fat burning aspect the calorie burn which be very very interesting another limitation in most of the studies that we're going to discuss it talks about the, the, the 
subjects in the studies being trained in the kettlebell use if they were previously untrained. It doesn't delineate whether they were using a squat motion or a hip hinge motion. So you're kind of left to, and that's a debate right now I know in, in kettlebell circles, hmm. but there's, I can't shed light on that based on the scientific research that's been done. I think when he, when he talks about the debate when it comes to the hinge or the squat motion, when he refers to the swing, I think it's very interesting because I believe we come from the corner where we say, hey, you can do both. You can do a hinge swing, which we are proponents of when it comes to the hand-to-hand -hand swing, but you can also do a squat swing motion, which activates a, probably more of your legs a little bit, and you can do it. And there's, I don't think there's a debate going on when it comes to what, what, what we believe, but I think I know what he refers to. Very, very interesting. Most of the studies we're going to look at, except for one, used a two-handed kettlebell a swing or in yeah. some cases a one-handed kettlebell swing. Now, before I start this process, I, I, I want a little more information. How many of you... So, did, did you catch this? I have to jump back. Scope of presentation, all of the research articles that will be summarized are based on the fundamental movement of the kettlebell exercise, two-handed swing, one-handed swing, which I think is, it, it's not, and, and this, I pointed this out in the one, uh, uh, in this one research that I picked apart. Why use a swing? Because if you use a, I mean, the swing is a, is a, don't get me wrong, it's an awesome exercise, but why use the kettlebell swing when it comes to checking out or, or researching kettlebells and with the swing, you only, in quotes, you only work the glutes, the hamstrings, the, the, the abdominals, the lower back muscles, which it's very interesting in the study they see that, and, and we will get to this, in the study they see that most of the activation comes from the glute medius and maximus, which, which is normal, and there's very little involvement of the abdominals, which is very interesting. But why use the swing? Why not use a clean and press? I think one of the best exercises to use would be a clean and press. You can do either the clean and strict press, clean and push press, or clean and jerk. Because if you do the clean and press or the clean and jerk, you use your full body. You use the whole body as a unit. And that would be very interesting because in this aspect, we only work out one area of, of your body. I start this process. I, I, I want a little more information. How many of you, your primary clientele is athletes? If you would raise your hand. And now I think we can switch. I'm going to try this, try this to go back into full you guys. Um, if this is working. No, unfortunately, it's not working, so I have to do it manually. Have to switch back for a second because I want to see how you guys are reacting. And we have some comments, so I want to say hello to you guys. And then we have to switch back to the video. It's so bad that my stream deck is not working, guys. I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't be lamenting now, but, man, I worked so hard on this stuff, and now it's not working. Well, however, whatever. It's nothing that we can do about it now. So let's jump into the comments. I want to see uh, who's in. We have, uh, we still have, we have long toe. I think this is a very interesting aspect that you've mentioned. You said, uh, I suspect it is due uh, to a lack of diffusion of kettlebell training. As more people become aware, kinesiologists, kinesiologists will do more studies. The US Army uses a kettlebell for brief portion of a fitness test very very interesting do you have the long toe if you have the difference or do you have the the ins and outs of this of this portion of the fitness test of the u.s army i would be highly interested if you can share it and omar guzman sending you love following from mexico thank you so much on uh omar i wanted to say i'm more <laughs> thank you so much brother sending you love back to mexico from Switzerland guys so awesome now let's jump back into the video and now we want to see um, where we at right here because I did my uh, small research so the next thing that we're gonna look at is 1245 I'm gonna have to switch to it bear with me for a second 1245 and we're gonna switch into it and let me check this right now. It's why is this not working? Guys, 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 why is this not working? You should imagine how hard I was working to get the stuff going and now it's not working. Ugh, whatever, whatever. Let's switch back, guys. So we're here at 1241 and it's about muscles activated in kettlebell swings. Very interesting. Brain. Check it out. What they found is 
if you can strengthen the semitendinosus, the muscle, the hamstring that's towards the inside, that seems to protect the knee against that type of force. So the stronger that muscle, that hamstring muscle, potentially you could reduce ACL injuries. So Very interesting. Uh, reducing a certain type of injury through kettlebell swings. And this is so interesting that the kettlebell, which can reduce lower back pain, which we will come back to, that the kettlebell can provide so much stuff. Let's keep going. Let's look at our population. What did they do? This is 16 elite female handball and soccer players. So again, here we have a population that's susceptible to ACL injuries. Mm. They used EMG to measure the activation of the hamstrings. And again, they used two exercises, right, guys, see kettlebell that. swings and a supine leg curl. I have a picture of a stability ball. That's not really what they did. They were laying on their back on the floor, mm. but rather than having their feet up on the ball, they had one leg straight up. Mm -hmm. And the other leg was on the ground yep. that moved like on a, with a piece ah, of carpet yeah. that was yeah. on like a yeah. uh, hardwood floor. Yeah. So same type of concept. It's a yeah. supine leg curl. Yeah. Question is, which supine of these two Supine leg exercise? curl, guys, or just in general a leg curl. I'm just going to show you this right here, leg curl. So they compared, very interesting, they compared this motion, this exercise, a lying or supine leg curl, whatever, and they compared it with the kettlebell swing and to see how um, how it can improve the uh, what muscles would be activated. Very very interesting. And how the muscle activation compares to the swing. This activated the muscles and to what extent? Well, here's what they found. This is I think this is a pretty powerful finding. The hmm. kettlebell swings, two-handed kettlebell swings using a 16 kilogram kettlebell. And I'm sorry, guys, if I have to jump in so many times, but this is interesting. He says the two-handed swing. So imagine how powerful, if he says that, that the research is very powerful, imagine how more powerful the hand-to-hand -hand swing could be because we believe, and this is my personal opinion, but I truly believe that the hand-to-hand -hand swing is the most superior version of, this, of the, those, those swing versions or alternatives that are out there activated the muscle that is important for this population 20 percent more than the biceps femoris wow the other exercise the supine leg curl actually stimulated the biceps femoris the one on the outside mm -hmm. 20 percent more than the semitendinosus so here we have if you're working with female athletes or females who are susceptible to acl injuries mm. the, the standard kettlebell swing two-handed kettlebell swing activates a muscle that may again Here's the application, may potentially avoid stresses that may cause ACL tears. Very interesting. So if you even suffer from ACL tears or have suffered in, in, in recent months or years, which, could, which, would keep, which is what I think is very interesting is that you can take this aspect of this study apply it to yourself and say, okay, I'd rather do kettlebell swings than a, a leg curl to protect my knees from any future problems when it comes to this type of injury. So interesting. Important application. All right, next study. This, this study will tell us which muscles are activated to what extent and also, what were the forces on the low back? Very, again, just a great study design. This very is Dr. Stuart McGill, who's pretty famous yeah, McGill, in his I've biochemical research. Very, very interesting. I'm sorry, biomechanical research. This one's published in our uh, I've read it, flagship read it journal. Many times. And here's what they did. They wanted to look at, again, which muscles were activated to what extent, the average shear load of the vertebrae in the low back, hmm. and then the average compression in the low back. So real quick, if I put my hands like this, this is L5, this is L4. If you think of these vertebrae right here in the low back, those are the ones that are very, those vertebral discs at that area, the ones that are often injured. Shear load is this movement, like back and forth. Compression is mm -hmm. pushing Up, them that yeah. on top of pushing each other down. and yeah. against each other. So those yeah. are the two yeah. different types of forces. Very interesting. So shear forces is something like this, and compression forces is something like this. That they looked at. And this one was a one-handed kettlebell swing. Mm -hmm. Again, same mass of the kettlebell here was 16 kilograms. 
The males were, most of them had kettlebell experience, so they're probably going to be what we'd say recreationally trained. And EMG was the measure to determine which muscles were activated. So here's the oh, winner. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. That's how they designed the study, which is very interesting. And see, always using the 16 kilo kettlebell. So like he said in the beginning, it will be a limitation because you have seven healthy males, uh, males about 26 years of age without back pain, most having kettlebell experience. So why not give them a heavier kettlebell, which would probably apply to that population. EMG was the measure to determine which muscles were activated. Mm -hmm. So here's the winners. The muscles that are most activated when doing a one-handed kettlebell swing are the glute maximus and the gluteus medius, which is 76% of is maximal normal. voluntary contraction, yeah. and then the gluteus medius, 70%. And these two muscles are incredibly weak when you're sitting on a desk all day. So interesting. And I believe it's one of the muscles that causes a lot of back pain, which we come to afterwards. It causes so much back pain. So if you strengthen the glutes, this helps you reduce the back pain. So imagine the kettlebell swing, and this is the one arm swing, I think. It's the one arm swing, right? So it activates about 70% of your glutes. So that means if you're looking for a strong glute exercise, here you go. I'm gonna show the next table from the study. Here's the glute max, 76. There's the glute medius at 70. Let's look at the other side. What was not activated? What was, out of all of these muscles, what was least activated? And it happened to be the rectus abdominis. There's the right. That's, that's and your there's abdominals. the left. Very interesting. So not much abdominal mm. stimulation with yeah. the, which surprised me. I would have thought there would have been a little higher activation, mm -hmm. but there wasn't. Okay, what about the forces of the low back? Again, potentially important depending on your client. Mm. About 461 newtons of shear force, and this was a superior shear force. So L4 was actually, if, if somebody's facing this way, mm. L4 was going back on L5, mm -hmm. that does not, this value is not very high. It's not a, a problem value. Okay. And then we also it's have about 3,200 newtons of compression. Wow. Now, I'm not a biomechanist, so I see these force numbers and yeah. I'm kind of lost. Yeah, Which, me too. I'm glad if you see this little information here, the authors actually gave me some reference. They said, okay, if you were to do a power clean with an Olympic so we bar, have to jump back put to 27 this. kilograms Let's jump back to this because we want to see this. About Here we go. As a point of reference, a power clean of an Olympic bar from the floor with 27 kilos of weight on it creates a compressive load of 7,000 Newton. <laughs> I didn't even know this. Well, can you imagine? This number sounds so, <laughs> so incredibly. So compression force will be boom from the top down, coming down. Wow. So check this out. Doing a 16 keto kettlebell swing, both shear and compressive loads were highest at the beginning of the swing. So when you're in the back swing, so and and, and a a power clean with a 27 kilo weight is not that heavy. So imagine what Klokov is experiencing on Newtons when it comes to compressive load of on his spine when it does this 150, 180 cleans and stuff like this. <laughs> this is so interesting, guys. So interesting. So now um, we want to jump right into the back pain, which I think is very interesting. The back pain is we experience this actually with our clients. So let me see. Let me see if I can jump back. I'm still hanging on. On uh, I'm still mad because this is not working because it's supposed to work. Why is this not working? Guys, give me a few seconds. I'm going to have to check why is this not working. Because otherwise, I'm getting so mad that I'm getting lost in the stream. One second, guys.
Wow, now it's working, guys. Wow, I had to press one button. Can you imagine, guys? Can you imagine I had to press one button? <laughs> and now I'm happy because it's working, guys. I've worked so hard for this setup, and I want everything to be clean. And that's just type of my personality, like I'm doing in the workout and all that kind of stuff. I want to be clean. I want to go 100%. So that was really bugging my mind. It was bothering me. So guys, and uh, at this point, we're about a 40, what? 45 minutes in the stream, right? So guys, if you have anything, any questions, we will get to it. You can ask the question in, in the Q&A, in the uh, live chat. And I want to just, I, I see how this uh, drags on a little bit. So I want to apologize if it drags on a bit. But um, this is one thing that I want to check out. And then we will switch into the comment section because we got a few comments that I want to have a word on. And uh, then I will check out your live Q&As if you have any questions concerning kettlebell training or nutrition where we can help you with uh, shoot off, guys. So this is back pain. So what I want to say right now is we experience this with our clients at, at, at almost any level. Now, I want to make this very, very important distinction. I believe from my experience as a coach, and now we have some scientific background that really backs it up. I believe from my experience working with people day to day, we see that most people, most people have the back pain reduced. Most people. When they work with us for a longer time, when they work with the kettlebell, when they do a lot of swings, and they even learn the Russian style because we teach the Grovoy kettlebell sports style, I think 90% have their back pain reduced, and most of them have their back pain eliminated. There's two distinctions, however. I just talked to this with a client today. I believe if you have structural integrity, your spine is safe, your ligaments are safe, your muscles are safe, your joints are safe, and no, no underlying conditions with these um, issues that I've just mentioned, uh, with these tissues that I've just mentioned, then I believe if you experience back pain, then it's muscular imbalances, which can be cur cured with training. And it's not only the back pain. We just had a client who had, um, he was working, without, uh, working with us at the beginning of the year, or he's, he's, he's been with us now for over two years now, or three years. He's been with him for the, since the start. So awesome. So um, he was, at the beginning of, the, of this year, he started working out with us with kettlebell training twice a week. And then he did a third session at home. Not only did he lose weight, he also cured his hip pain because he had a surgery on the, I think, the right side of his hip. And then, since then, he had pain. He always felt pain when the weather changed or however, and he said, well, I just have to live with it. But he was scared that probably the other side is coming as well, so the left side he has to do surgery as well. So then he reduced his hip pain almost completely. Then we had a little experiment. In the summer, he went on vacation and he stopped kettlebell training. He was just running because he had no kettlebell where he went on vacation, and he was on vacation for, I think, four weeks. He came back. Complain about the hip pain coming back. So he went to his physiotherapist who said, listen, this is muscular imbalances. And I said, listen, maybe it's structural problems because now you're working out with the kettlebell and now the pain is coming back. Maybe it's structural. Then I went through his activities and I found out, which is very interesting, I found out that in on vacation he didn't he stopped working with kettlebells and before he went on vacation he, he visited us twice a week and he was doing three kettlebell workouts per week so i said let's do an experiment we do for three weeks only you come to us twice a week and you do a, a third kettlebell workout at home you know what happened long uh, long story short his hip pain went away very interesting so i believe if your integrity is there you can reduce hip uh, 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 pain or uh, lower back pain, hip pain, whatever kind of pain it is that, that causes it when it comes to from muscular imbalances, which most people experience in the lower back and the glutes and the hamstrings and all that kind of stuff, I believe you can eliminate it. Let's check it out what the science says. It's 18, uh, 1850. Uh, Let's check it out. And I'm going to stay quiet now. So here's the citation. This was done in a different country. 
Who's, this was who was in the study. Think of a typical office worker, a sedentary individual. And what they did was they said, we want you to tell us how painful your upper back or your, your neck shoulder area feels and tell us how painful your lower back is. So this is a subjective feeling on low back pain and upper back pain. Hmm. Then once they got these measures, they put half the people, there's about 20 people in each group, half the people do nothing, just continue your everyday life. The other half, we want you to train with kettlebells for eight weeks, hmm. three times per week. Hmm. And here's a little diagram of the program. It was progressive. Remember, these were sedentary people, so you don't hand somebody, a sedentary person, a kettlebell and say swing. They actually had them just mimic the motion, so learning the squat exercise, the body weight squat exercise. They progressed to a kettlebell deadlift, mm -hmm. then oh. a double-handed swing, wow. and then into, at the end of the eight-week program, a one-armed kettlebell swing. Hand-to-hand -hand would have been the best version, guys. Here's what they found. Again, I think this probably might, may be the most powerful study out of all that we're going to discuss. At the end of the eight-week period, the people that swung the kettlebell, a typical kettlebell training, uh, kettlebell swinging program, had a significant reduction in their perception wow. of their upper back or their neck shoulder pain. So the control group, basically, obviously, you wouldn't expect it to get better or worse yeah. if they didn't do anything yeah, different. Of course. Now, what about the low back? What do we think happened with the low back? Same thing. Wow. Simple kettlebell swings with two arms. See, See guys? Resulted in a significant perceived pain of the lower back. I told y'all. I told y'all. <laughs> so interesting. So interesting, guys. So this really uh, shows that the power... Of, of, of kettlebells and the power that the kettlebell can have on your lower back and this is something or lower back pain I'm sorry and this is something that even uh, Pavel Satsulin said in a in in the podcast with Joe Rogan he said he experienced that working with athletes who are pretty banged up from their high intensity training or high intensity elite level uh, com com or competing on elite levels um, these guys were pretty banged up in the hips and the shoulders and all that kind of stuff. And he said, these athletes work best with kettlebells because it's so soft on the joints if you do it right. So this is so interesting. Not only can you improve your back pain or hip pain or any pain that caused, that is caused from muscular imbalances, which most of the time lies in your hips because we sit all day. You can also... Um, do it by yourself. You don't need nobody else. You can actually do the kettlebell swing at home. You don't need to go. Uh, you, you, you have to get some coaching. And then you can do it at home. So you can reduce lower back pain, pain in, 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 in the chest area, in the upper back. And this is so powerful. And you can even do it if you have some underlying issues when we refer to what um, Pavel Tatsulin was saying. And I got this question today and I can also not prove it, but I have a story of one of our clients. She has a, a hernia and herniated discs. And I think she has it, um, she has a, it's, it's, it's made rigid. I can't remember, I, I don't know the, the word in English, but she has some plates or just some, some steel in her lower back to stabilize the spine. And I think she has some additional stuff in her neck. So she showed me once. She showed me a a a um, um, a radiologist's image and a scan, and it looked it looked crazy. And I think she got this from a young age, and it looked really really crazy. And we were able, and she can't she can't even do this. When she turns her head, this is where it stops. She can't do more. But actually, when she joins us in the workout, and we were doing when we did the high intensity program, she visited us for one high intensity training per week and we improved her pain in all the areas. She got stronger, she got fitter, of course, in, in, as, a, as a result, but we also improved every single area where she was having some pain and she was really, quote unquote, banged up 
from her spine. So you see how the kettlebell, if it is done right, if it is coached right, if you get some great coaching, what the kettlebell can do for you. It's so interesting. So, <coughs> excuse me, guys. So now let's, uh, yeah, we're almost done with the stream, guys. I'm so happy that you guys are still joining. Let's go back into the full view. Boom, now I hear that it's working on. Oh, that's awesome. So you should see me in full view now, guys. So let's jump into the stream. We have 15 people in the chat. Guys, so great that you're still joining. I want to check out some comments that you guys are getting off or showing off. I'm not showing off sometimes. I'm, mi I'm mixing and matching these words. It's so funny. <laughs> so uh, let's check it out. Uh, they use it for long toes. He says they use it for a farmer's carry only. Okay, so if I'm getting this right, long toe, you can correct me if I'm wrong. The U.S. Army is using a farmer's carry for a brief portion of their fitness test, right? Interesting. However, you could do it with dumbbells. So it's not probably, I wouldn't say it's the perfect, of, of course, you can, we also do farmer's walks. But it's probably not the perfect use of a kettlebell. It would be very interesting if the U.S. Army would, desi would decide, or any institution, so to speak, would decide to use a kettlebell program to test not only the fitness, but to test endurance and strength and power because the, the kettlebell is so versatile. It can do so much. So interesting. The U.S. Army is using farmer's carry for their fitness test. Very interesting. Atrium Cool says EMG. What do you mean? Can you clarify? Rolf, you're saying there may be poor education of coaches in what kettlebell training can provide and benefits when the correct exercise and execution are used. Rolf, um, I really have to agree with you here. And I think I think that's due to the fact, and we talked about it, we talked about this in the last live stream. Um, I think this is due to the fact that gyms and 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 fitness studios are not made for people to advance in their form I'm, I'm saying i know this is a bold claim but let me clarify when economically speaking a gym only generates the most money in january off of those members who don't even visit the gym so most gyms take up like and these are statistics very interesting statistics take up 10 to 20 more people that they could handle. So if we look at that aspect, economically speaking, the gym is made or designed to make money and not to help people because you don't have coaches who are very well educated because, and it's very interesting, since the dawn of machines, uh, Arthur, uh, Kim, Kim, um, his name escapes me, Arthur or something, he was the founder of Nautilus and he came with the strength training machine, with the machines that we know in the gym. So actually what, what and if and I'm quoting Mark Ripto, quoting from his book, um, Starting Strength, the uh, basic barbell training in the intro, where he says, the dawn of machines led to the fact, I'm paraphrasing, but the dawn of machines in, in gyms led to the situation that coaches don't need an education at all. Coaches don't need an education at all because the machine took its part. So you can put people on the machine and usually what they do, leg press, leg curl, leg extension, lat pull down, chest press, crunch, back extension, rotation. That's what they do. So you put people on this one route. Okay, here are these 10 exercises and have some fun. So you don't need the coach because the machine takes its part. And so I believe, Rolf, as long as the fitness industry is thriving off of the situation or off of the economic aspect without really engaging in trying to help people. And I'm, I'm really, I'm, 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 this is bold stuff that I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not saying that people are not wanting to help. But the majority of the fitness industry, I believe, is not made to help people along in their career or along in their, career, along in their in their training all right so that's the reason why coaches are not getting that good of an education and that's probably the reason why and i have to agree with you Rolf, that most coaches or most gyms don't even touch the kettlebell rightfully so rightfully so 
don't try to teach the kettlebell if you don't have a basic understanding of, of uh, anatomically speaking and anthrop anthropometrically speaking and, and, and coaching in general, understanding the kettlebell. And, and listen, I'm, I'm, I don't want to sit on a high horse if you're just starting out like I did. I started out four years ago and I didn't have that, that education that I have now when it comes to kettlebells. But at least I had some basic understandings of, of, of squats, of deadlifts, of presses. I came from that background training with free weights. So a lot of coaches or fitness instructors in the gym don't even have that, that base of a knowledge, with a, which I think is so sad. That's the reason why I left this industry and started my own, started the personal training business because I was lacking. I, could, I knew I couldn't help the people like I wanted to. So people are not touching these free weights and kettlebells in general. And that's what Mark Ripto is saying. He says, that's the reason why people are, are not touching barbells because they're not taught right. Back before the machines, quoting Mark Ripto again, before the dawn of the machines, you had to talk to a coach who was pretty prolific in his knowledge because you were going with barbells or dumbbells or probably kettlebells in Russia, right? So you have to have a coach who knows the stuff. But nowadays you don't need it and you still can economically thrive off of it without needing a coach. So why change anything? So always follow the money. Very interesting, Rolf. Very interesting. Omar, I have seen that video before and regardless of pros and cons, I enjoy a lot working with kettlebells. Life-changing and joyful. Thanks for sharing all this content. Great job. Thank you so much, Omar. Thank you for joining the stream. Thank you for this awesome con uh, comment. And hey, I think you're on the right track, man. Working with kettlebells can be life-changing, can be joyful. We enjoy it that, that way as well. We believe that, that the kettlebell is, is one of the, the best tools that you can apply when it comes to training. And I believe that 80% of the population could benefit from training with kettlebells even more than training with machines. This is my opinion. So, so great, Omar, that you have been having fun with kettlebells. Long toe, uh, electromyogram essentially. Oh, did you say something about the EMG? Because I don't see it in the chat. So maybe you said, uh, you were probably quoting something about the EMG, all right? So here you go, Longto says, electromyogram essentially, electrical current through the muscle. These tests are typically ordered to diagnose damaged nerves and muscles. In a research setting, they are seeing total contracture. Very interesting, Longto. So that's uh, also one very interesting aspect is when it comes to uh, training EMS, it's what we call it in German, electric muscle stimulation, which, can, which is also a very interesting aspect. However, um, I don't think that that stuff like this is superior because from experience, but you can type it in the chat if, an, if you have another experience. We had people joining our workout, doing some free weight stuff, and they were coming from the EMS, from electromuscle stimulation training, and they had no control at all. They couldn't even lift the weight properly. So this is the question because, and this is just off topic a little bit, but you have these uh, electromagnetic stimulation training claims they say you do 10 minutes of this equals 60 minutes in the gym which is a probably in my opinion untrue claim this is not possible what we can rather say and of course i'm biased a little bit but what we, what we can rather say is probably the caloric expenditure of kettlebell training 30 minutes without stopping very important without stopping or just stopping for a quick rest but keep working for 30 minutes with a weight that challenges you but you can do it for 30 minutes probably the caloric expenditure is higher not probably but probably 90 percent i would i would assume is higher than training in a gym where you do rests and sets and breaks and all that kind of stuff interesting hm cool uh, i think your your uh, question was answered right from long toe angie my my woman says hello from home love from me and gypsy Seeing you guys soon. Mwah. So then we have Nico. Knowledge session. Tuned in. Listening. Processing and learning. Greetings and thanks from South Africa. Right. Sending you so much love, Nico. So awesome that you're always joining these streams. So awesome that you guys are joining. So awesome. Sending you love back to South Africa. Uh, Sign Mulligan. Did you ever do the Dan John 10,000 swing challenge? After the second week, your back feels fantastic. It's impossible not to stand strong and have good posture after this challenge. I've heard about it. 
I think I've heard about it at the beginning of the year, and people were telling me, hey, uh, the, did you hear about this Dan John? Or, uh, people were telling me, actually, I'm doing the Dan John. Um, in fact, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Dan. This is what happens if you have hotkeys assigned to your keyboard. That's the reason why I'm 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 <laughs> I'm actually doing uh, 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 using a different uh, stream deck. All right. So as you can see, wow! If you check out the first article, T Nation, 10,000 swing kettlebell workout 2013. Wow! Dan John is an OG. He's an OG. And there are some folks who are really OGs, and I always listen to what these people are saying. So I heard about the challenge, but it's, I didn't even know that it was back in 2013. Wow. And they revisited it in 2020. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I heard about it, and I think you're 100%. 100%. Uh, I agree with you. So I believe you can't even feel, you, you will get stronger, you will get, you, uh, your back will improve. If you do uh, the, this, this challenge, which I think is a very interesting challenge, maybe sometimes, and this is not, um, what could happen is maybe some people would misunderstand it. If people don't know how to do a swing correctly, it could probably be a little bit tricky. But however, this is not Dan John's fault. And uh, what I would probably say, what we see when, when, when we see our clients working is we always advise to go to work with about, let's say like, uh, work your way up from two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, because the, the rep thing and is, it's just, and this is guys, please don't misunderstand this for, for trying to bash Dan or anything. Um, the aspect what we see in rep counting if we would offer a critique on a very high level is we see it with uh, um with our clients and experience if people have to start counting they confuse it they confuse the motion especially beginners they confuse it so that's the reason why we actually stopped using reps or we use them but not that often and we went for time. This is actually one of the secrets that we keep pushing because we believe when you work with kettlebells, we always come from this traditional way of thinking, reps and sets. When you come from the traditional weightlifting stuff. I thought like this as well. And we even see it. I have to do a second stream about this uh, study because it's so interesting and next time I'll be better prepared. Um, because he actually said it in one aspect, they were comparing kettlebell swings or what, yeah, they were comparing Pairing weightlifting and kettlebell training, and then they offer the the. In fact, let's check it out. Let's check it out. I have to show it to you guys. I have to show it to you. Uh, this was 20, uh, 33, 40. I'm gonna have to show it to you. This program, how they, uh, 33, 40, how they compared it. Let's see if I can find it. Yep, here it is. Here it is. Let's switch back, guys, and I'm gonna have to uh, show this to you. So check this out. This is the program, kettlebell training with a 16 kilo kettlebell. So they do week one to three, and that's comparing to a traditional weightlifting program. And at the end of the study, they found out that the weightlifting was, was improving much more than the kettlebell, which is normal if you look at what they're doing here. They're doing uh, kettlebell swings, three sets, of, three sets of six reps, and this, that's, that's nothing. That, that's, that's even for a beginner. I believe even a, even a beginner can do one set of six reps with a 16 kilo. Probably won't feel feel nice for his back, but probably he can do it. If he has proper technique, it, it will even feel better for the back. And then week four to six, they went up to four sets. So you see they're using the traditional way of training with kettlebells or, or traditional way from the traditional weightlifting stuff and they apply it to kettlebell training. If you would ask me and then they do accelerated swings which would we would probably call up qualified with high swings bringing the kettlebell higher up almost going into a snatch i hope they're not doing the american swing version where shoulders can be a little bit tricky and then they do goblet squats when it comes to goblet squats you can actually use the rep count but actually if you would ask me you tell me gregory designed the program kettlebell training 16 kilo then we would do, and you tell me, we use kettlebell swings, high swings, and goblet squats. I would say, okay, week one to three, we, uh, through, <laughs> week one to three, we would start with 
first week, two minutes, then three minutes, second week, and then week three, we will be up to, let's say, like four minutes. Starting with one, two, three, it's probably a little individually, but I would say like, hey, at the end of week three, we're at four minutes, all right? Four minute kettlebell swings, four minute accelerated swings or high swings, and then four minutes of goblet squats. But however, the goblet squats would be four minutes is pretty, pretty tough. So if you do four minutes of goblet squats, I'd have to teach you, or we would have to teach you to be able to rest in the squat position. Very, very interesting. So we would say, that's when week one to three, and then we would step it up week four to six, and that's if we would say you, you visit us for three times per week, we would say, okay, now week four to six, in week six, we end up with six minutes of swings, accelerated swings, probably six or se seven minutes, and goblet squats, let's say like six or seven minutes, all right? And then, very interesting if you do the goblet squat version, going into the squat rest position. Or we could even do it easier and say, hey, let's do two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, all right? Two minutes like we do in the live workouts, two minutes kettlebell swings, two minutes accelerated swings, two minute goblet squats, week one to three, then week four to six, let's go up. Three minutes swings, three minutes of both swings, and three minutes squats. We could do this. If we would use this higher number of minutes that I mentioned earlier, we would take a break between the exercises. Or we could chain them. We love chaining that stuff. Be like, okay, let's do like three minutes of swings, three minutes of high swings, three minutes of goblet squats, all right? And that would probably be a better um, comparison to the weightlifting training because look at the weightlifting training program. 80% of the one rep max, so that means you're going pretty heavy, pretty heavy, and of course you will see better results. So using the 16 keto kettlebell, we would have to apply a different program. You understand where I'm, where I'm coming from? Very, very interesting. So let's jump back into the comments, guys. And then we're going to wrap this one up. i uh, been streaming for so long, but I love this stuff. I love this stuff. We still have 12 people in the chat. So great that you guys are still joining. So Ash, he's saying, I've heard some fitness experts say certain body types suit certain exercises. Not sure if this is true, but there's a body type that's better suited to kettlebells, or is that nonsense? Very interesting question, Ash. From my experience, or what I can tell you is, I believe, there is a certain... A word that's called anthropom anthropom anthropometry anthropometry anthropometrics anthropometrics right in English. So let me Google this for you guys. Anthropometrics, right? Oops, anthropometrics. You're live, guys. So check this one out. So we see anthropometry. If I'm saying this right, says. Anthropometry refers to the measurement of the human individual. Okay, so that's that's it. The science of measuring the size and proportions of the human body, called anthrop anthropometry, anthropometrics, especially as applied to the design to the design of furniture and machines. Okay, but we talk about the the human being now. Very very interesting. So, if we jump back to your question, Ash, what we could say is, hey. If you have, and we have this in experience, we can talk from experience as well. If you have somebody who has long legs, probably they will have some problems with certain exercises or just they will have some limitations. Another thing that we can say, and Squat University even confirms this, which is very interesting. If it, I highly recommend check out Squat University. These guys are top knowledge what they do. If you have a hip joint, uh, a pelvis that has a certain rotate, a certain um, diameter or a certain uh, positioning of where the of the sockets where the the femur comes in, all right, then this may also influence how you do a squat, which is very interesting. So one thing that we also saw in experience with our clients was. If somebody has short arms, and we have people who have, uh, we've worked with people who have very short arms, when they go into a goblet squat, all right, and we call it the squat rest position. Let's see if I can find this. I'm gonna find this one for you guys to show you. Uh, squat, see if I got it. 
Uh, man, sometimes I'm, I'm jumping into that stuff. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, box squat. No, 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 no. Jump squat. No. No, no, no. I don't have it. Huh? I don't have it, guys. Overhead squat. No. Rack squat. No, I don't have it. Squat. Ah, right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, guys. I got it. Boom. This is so awesome with that tool. Now switching back. Now check this out. You should see it right now. This is a so-called squat rest position. Angie's resting in a squat and I'm resting in a squat, right? So what happens is I can actually rest because my elbows are touching my knees, right? So I can rest and breathe. Angie's doing the same. So actually we have a few clients who have short arms, longer torso, shorter legs, and therefore they're not able to go down and rest their elbows on their knees. So interesting. They can't do a squat rest position. So that's probably the aspect that you're asking us, right? So it is possible that you have some anthropometrics that allows for certain movements to be easier or limits you in certain movements. Which is also very interesting when you look at power lifters where if you have the strongest force production when it comes to deadlifts or just being the strongest guy or bodybuilders you have to have not only genetics but certain anthropometrics which make it easier or make it look better very interesting hope this answers your questions ash thanks for asking arun sharma i'm used to working out with the kettlebell for over six months before the pandemic at the gym since the pandemic i've had no access just person my own set i'm very excited so awesome arun Make sure you follow this channel. Make sure you subscribe to us and you can have uh, join us in our live workouts because that's, that's actually what we focus on the most. And then maybe we can help you with your, your kettlebell training. Man, I, I can really feel it if you're excited. We're also excited because we've ordered kettlebells in June 20, 2020 and we will have them delivered in January 2021. <laughs> that's so interesting. So Matt, I am tardy. I will have to watch on reply. Hello from Jasper. Looking forward to hanging this one out. Yes, yes, yes. On replay, right? So Matt, no, no, no worries. You can watch it on replay. So awesome. Sending you love back, Jasper. So Arun, I honestly didn't know kettlebell working out so many benefits. I did feel awesome while I was working out with it. I'm hoping to self-learn the right way through your channel. So awesome, Arun. I hope we can help you. And yeah, that's what the kettlebell does. The kettlebell is so powerful, so much stuff. That's awesome. So uh, really appreciate your work. And my question is self-learning and practice safe. How can we do it the right way? That's a very good question, Arun. Um, I always, we always recommend talking to a coach who can really help you. However, we understand that sometimes if you discover the kettlebell and you do even the Russian version, the good voice sports style, which we are advocates for, of, then maybe self-learning can be tricking through video only. This is probably the disadvantages of the YouTube university. You can learn a lot, you can do a lot. However, it is always best and recommended to check out, uh, to, do, to get some proper and awesome life coaching education. I can actually help you. You can check out the IKFF. This is one of, this is actually something that we are part of. Let me show this one right here. As soon as the website loads, check this one out. This is something that we recommend. This is, uh, we got the, our certification from Steve Cotter. So if you're interested, this is maybe something that I would advise you to check out. And then we have uh, Strong First, of course, which I can show you. What I have to say is we are not, uh, we don't have any experience working with Strong First. We have experience working with the IKFF, which are very, very, uh, uh, we love what they do. We love what Steve Cutter do. We actually got our certificates from him personally last year. And Strong First is uh, another type of training. It's the hard style. However, these are the two most well-known um um, educational systems however if you dig what we do if you think hey listen Gregory what you're doing is worth my time and maybe worth your money then shoot us an email or check out our website and then you can just I'm gonna I'm leave you with the comment with the with the with the email or you check out the website leberstock.ch check it out I'm gonna type it right in the chat and then you can you can maybe check it out and maybe see how we can help you I'm gonna type it right in right now so there you find the email and then 
you can yeah you can connect with us and maybe we can help you because actually we had somebody from youtube who ask who asked for life coaching and maybe we can help you all right so that's it good job and atrium cool is entering the matrix that's awesome guys i think this is it man i really love that stuff one hour and 15 minutes of talking so great that you guys have joined and want to make this clear don't miss it out don't miss don't miss 11 a.m. Central Eastern Standard Time this Thursday. In fact, I'm going to show it to you right now. This is so easy now with the... This is so easy. Man, I didn't even get into the comments on our YouTube channel because I talk too much. Man. But let me show you. Let me show you guys. Here we go. You have to check this one out because Angie will be rocking live. This is the first time that Angie is going live on her own. Of course, I will be here supporting her. And we will use two cameras. So check out live in 37 hours, November the 12th, 11 a.m. Central Eastern Standard Time. And then the second uh, live workout that you have to check out is this one coming up this Saturday as well on November the 14th, 12 p.m. So if you just joined, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you like kettlebell stuff because we love the kettlebell and we love to talk about it for hours, as you can see. <laughs> and guys, thank you so much for joining. See you in the next one. We'll be live on Thursday and Saturday. And on Tuesdays, we always got these Q&A sessions. So if you discover something over the course of the week and then you want to ask us something, type it in, 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 in the video. We have so many videos. You just ask a question. And we can answer your question in the next live stream because we're dedicated to helping you guys find the power of the kettlebell because I'm so passionate. We're so passionate about it. Okay. I think this is it, guys. We will catch you on the next one. Sending you love. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the stream, let me know, like it, and share it with your friends, and write something down in the comments. Guys, I want to talk to you for a second, because now it's all about your subscription. I really want to earn, we want to earn your subscription. We want to earn it with hard work. What we do on YouTube is my goal is to serve you the best kettlebell content, the best kettlebell workouts, there are highest quality content on this platform. This is a huge goal, I know, but I'm driven. I'm so hungry because somebody recently told me, Gregory, if you want people to subscribe to your stuff, then you gotta serve them the best content and the best quality there is. And that's my goal. So if we've earned your subscription, let me say thank you and welcome to the Levistock Kettlebell YouTube community. Now you see the schedule on my left. We have on Tuesdays, you can tune in and check out our live Q&A where you can ask questions about the kettlebell. On Thursday, we're starting a new format where you have a live kettlebell workout with Angie. You know she's a beast, right? And then on Saturday, we have 12 p.m. Our standard workout where Angie and me are getting down with you guys to get the workout done. And you see these people on the left, these names, these are folks who donated to the stream. These are folks who joined the Kettlebell Club. You can join the Kettlebell Club right now. And you can financially support us if you want to take a step further. And that's what we do. So thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. I'm so stoked to announce that we have our first English workout course and it's called 30 Days of Kettlebells. I'm clicking on my 30 Days of Kettlebells course on your left hand corner you have all the chapters and the lessons all these workouts are divided into chapters and into lessons right here it says welcome to 30 days of kettlebells we have some important information blah blah so then when you're ready you can click on continue and boom you're switching into your first workout and it already starts so here you got your first workout as you can see when we scroll down you can see here is the description for the workout no ads no ad break okay it's just 
the workout and you. You see the exercises, you see what you have to do. 30 Days of Kettlebells is an intense workout program that builds you up as a beginner without prior knowledge. That's what we specialize in. And this is very important. Even though we cover certain aspects of different exercises and small tutorials, this is not a specific technique class or course. We offer these types of courses as well. However, they're currently only in German. This is strictly a workout course. From now on, you will receive one of the following tasks each day for the next 30 days. You have a workout. So if a car pops up that says workout, here you will be tasked to work out. Simple. If a car pops up that says rest on your day two you saw previously, we believe that regeneration is also as important as working out. On these days, you can rest. Then we move on, you have cards that pop up that say rest and study. Here you can rest and you can study a specific topic that we'll cover in this lesson. And finally, you have some cards that pop up that say rest or workout. What that means is you can either work out if you feel like it or you can take a break. It's only $49.99 so if you want to support us, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support our kettlebell courses and if you want to enjoy something ad free and learn something new and get a deeper understanding of the kettlebell and get a deep connection to us, then feel free to buy this course and have fun.